Space Marine 1 came out in 2011. Do you know what else came out in 2011? Batman Arkham City, Portal 2, Deus Ex, Human Revolution, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, Infamous 2, Little Big Planet 2, Dead Space 2, Dark Souls, The Witcher 2, Battlefield 3, Uncharted 3, Gears of War 3, LA Noir, Crisis 2, Dragon Age 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Resistance 3, Mortal Kombat Soft Reboot. 2011 was a legendary year for video games, so chances are, you probably didn't play Space Marine 1, but I, in fact, did. And I'd say it's a six or seven out of 10, but it came out in a time where storytelling was a big emphasis in games. LA Noir was showing off its features where it had actors doing live motion capture. A man's home is his property, so get the hell off of my property. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. And a lot of these other games had interesting choices and, RPG mechanics, where Space Marine 1 was a bit of a hack and slash game with a, you know, not so amazing narrative. But Space Marine 2 is coming out in a bit of a different landscape, where the industry has shifted from these single player narrative focused games to crappy mobile and live service games. Some of the games that have come out already in 2024 have been Conquered, Skull and Bones, and a Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. To be fair, there have been some other great single player video games that have come out this year, such as Black Myth Wukong, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, The Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree, Dragon's Dogma 2. But I think the industry has shifted a bit where gamers respect gameplay a lot more than half-baked narratives that aren't as good as films with just mediocre gameplay. Oh, speaking of that, Star Wars Outlaws also came out this year. <laughs> But because of the state of the industry in 2024, I think Space Marine 2 couldn't have come at a better time. The game respects its source material and it's very sincere in its delivery. Even if it's not breaking ground narratively, it believes in the narrative that it's telling and it's doing a good, sincere job at telling it, which stays true to the lore, respects the source material. As for the gameplay, the game feels good. Admittedly, it feels better than the first game, which it absolutely should. It came out like 13, 14 years later. The level design is really good. While it is a bit of a hallway simulator with a little bit of paths to deviate from, they still make sure to keep it really interesting with little dynamic cutscenes and little mini bosses here and there. They have good weapon variety, which they scatter throughout the map. And I always felt like when I would come across a weapon, if I picked it up, it was really well suited for the next battle that I was about to fight. But even if I didn't pick up the weapon that was there on the map and I kept what I had because I liked it, I didn't feel penalized like I couldn't defeat this next encounter because, oh, I needed a short range or a long range weapon and I didn't have one. You're able to play and complete it however you like. The music in this game is amazing. Now, it's not some Final Fantasy score where you're going to remember individual songs. The music is very ominous, kind of atmospheric background music, which maybe sounds a little bit unimpressive, but honestly, for me, they just nailed it. And then the music paired with the stunning graphics, I'd say this game looks like one of the best games I've seen out today. So with the music and the graphics combo, and with them just respecting the lore and just bringing this 40K universe to life, man, they just nailed it. I think all of those things just synergized for something that made a really special experience that I think resonated with a lot of people. While well, I think you also will see a lot of people aren't giving it a 10 out of 10 or even a 9 out of 10. They do say it's an 8 out of 10 game. I think it's because it doesn't transcend any of these systems in a way where the story is going to be so memorable that it's blowing you away. The combat's not the best combat you'll ever have. It's not going to be as dynamic as something like Wukong, where you just have all these different types of abilities. It has to be contained within the 40K universe. So I think it's one of these situations where they executed the vision 10 out of 10. That doesn't necessarily mean that that makes for the greatest game possible. You can execute a stick figure drawing 10 out of 10, but it's still not gonna be as good as the Mona Lisa. You know what I mean? Now I'm not saying Space Marine 2 is a stick figure. No, it's much more than that, but it isn't, it's not shooting for something that's going to be a 10 out of 10 masterpiece that's going to redefine gaming. They were shooting for a good executed Space Marine 40k game and they did it beautifully. Some of the little things that I loved is how the character's armor got a bit scratched up and you would see progressively as the campaign went on, the scratches were still there and the armor got more and more dirty and scratched up. They had little side conversations as you're walking through between missions that 
gave you a bit of that world building and put you in the place of that 40K universe. Also, something I noticed about this game as well is that it has a single player campaign. It has a PVP matchmaking mode and it has co-op so you can play with your friends. All in all, this game is a complete package. And it's just interesting to me how many games don't come out with those types of features. I suck at the PVP, but I've had a lot of fun playing it. I love that you can work towards cosmetics because in 40K Warhammer, cosmetics are really, really cool. It is a really big part of the whole franchise and brand because 40K is also a miniature painting company. If you've painted Warhammer, you make all of those little tiny, tiny decisions on all of the embellishments, the colors, all the little extra stuff that you put on the armor. You learn about what they all mean. So there is like this connection with the cosmetics in a way that other games don't have. And let's talk about some of the negatives though, because there are a few. One big thing that I've heard from people and that I agree with is that the enemy variations are a little bit lacking. And I would say it's not that there's just no variation, there actually is a decent amount, but I would say like the stretch of time, you know, especially towards the earlier parts of the game, um, you don't get a lot of variations when you're fighting the first types of enemies, the Tyranids. There's not too many different types of Tyranids that you're fighting. There is variation, but I think you just for too long are fighting the same types of enemies. That being said, when they do have the variations, when they do introduce a new enemy, it's awesome. But I think when I came into it, I, for some reason, just thought you were gonna see more factions. I think the problem is, is we know there's so many different factions in 40K. So for half of the game being the Tyranids and then the other half of the game being the other faction that you fight, it seemed like, okay, well, you could have done so much more there, but then if you think about it, it does make sense narratively that you're not gonna just throw in a bunch of different factions just for gameplay variety's sake. And I do hope that means that they're saving these other factions for DLC for future games like this. And while the combat is good, I don't think it's absolutely perfectly polished. You know, it is a bit of a hack and slashy kind of chaotic game. So they do have a bit of frame cancellation where say you're going into an attack, but you see you can press the execute button real quick to execute this enemy. You can press that in mid attack and it will cancel out that animation and go into that execution animation, which is a good thing. Like it looks a little bit jarring, but that's a good thing because it feels good to play that you can quickly press that button and perform that execution rather than having to wait for yourself to finish that whole animation before you can do that. That being said, it doesn't work perfectly. I would say, especially with like the parrying, the parrying wasn't always perfect. And sometimes it seemed like there was opportunities for me to parry, but then the parry flash on screen thing didn't show, but it didn't like ruin the experience for me, but it's just not perfect. And then like, it's a bit slow and clunky. And like, like I said, that's, kind of what it should be. You're this big clunky space marine. But I could still see some people just not loving the feel of that because you're not some fast, quick character. I mean, you're, you are kind of fast and quick, but you st there's still just like this heaviness to it. So why is this game special other than the reasons I've already mentioned? It doesn't try and subvert all of your expectations or change up the formula. It's a crazy sci-fi fantasy hack and slash violent fun game. And that's it. Yet it takes itself seriously and it's sincere with its story, its characters, the lore of the franchise, and the players that are playing it. And just nails the tone of the source material. What I want moving forward, I would love it if they annualize this game. Now I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous because annualizing a game like Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed eventually means that the quality of that game is going to degrade. So I don't maybe necessarily think it should come out every single year, but what I'm saying is that I would play one every single year. If they had an eight to 12 hour campaign where you went through with a different Space Marine faction or even just the Ultramarines again, I would buy that every single year if it was as good as this one. I would love to see DLCs. I wouldn't mind if they stuck with just the Ultramarines, but I would love if the DLCs or future games went with the Dark Angels, the Blood Angels, the Black Templar. I would just love to see exploration with the other factions, even like the Sisters of Silence or the Custodes. Like, there's so many opportunities here for this franchise to just grow. And I think they know that. And I think that's what's happening. And I'm really excited. I think this is just the first of many more 40K stories and video games to come. But before I go, I'd love to throw it back to you. Which faction or what stories or what would you like to see in the 40K universe? There's so much to explore. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Oh, wait, I didn't get a rating. I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10, maybe even an 8.5. If you're a 40K fan, I know people have said if you're a 40K fan, it's a 10 out of 10. 
I, I don't quite think that. I think maybe it's like a 9 out of 10 if you're a 40K fan. And it's just an 8 out of 10 if you like video games, if you enjoy running around as a space marine hacking stuff up. 8 out of 10. Solid game. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.